in this video, I want to have a look at a couple of different questions that involve calculating areas and volumes by finding the integral of reciprocal functions. So our first question asks us to find the area between the curve y equals x over x squared plus 5, the x-axis and the lines x equals 1 and x equals 3, and we want to calculate that correct to three decimal places. So to do that, to calculate area, we're going to find the integral between 1 and 3, so there are our bounds, of this function here, so x over x squared plus 5 dx. Now, the numerator here is almost the, der the derivative of the denominator, but not quite. So if we wanted it to be the derivative, it would have to be 2x instead of just x. So we can manipulate it so that it is, but then we have to compensate for that by putting a half out the front. So now that we've got that half out the front, we can integrate and we'd have log to the base e of x squared plus 5 and we want to um, substitute in our bounds of 3 and 1 there. So we're going to have not a third, we're going to have a half outside of log to the base e. If we put 3 in here, we'd have 3 squared, so 9 plus 5, so log to the base e of 14 minus log to the base e of 6. And if we pop that in our calculator because we've been asked to give our answer correct to three decimal places, we would end up with 0 0.424 units squared for the area underneath that curve. Our second question asks us to calculate the area of the region enclosed by the curve y equals 2 over x and the straight line y equals minus 2x plus 5. So first we're going to draw ourselves a quick little sketch. So the line y equals 2 over x is going to be a hyperbola and because it's positive it's going to be in these two quadrants here. And the straight line y equals minus 2x plus 5 is going to go down here somewhere. Assuming that's straight, which it doesn't look very straight in my diagram. So we want to find this region here, the area of this region here. The first thing we need to do to be able to do that is to find the points of intersection of those lines. So we don't necessarily need both coordinates, but we do need the x coordinates of both of those points. So to do that, we're going to solve these two equations simultaneously. So if we call this one equation 1 and this one equation 2, we're going to sub 1 into 2. So we'd have 2 over x equals minus 2x plus 5. Then we're going to multiply both sides of that equation by x. So we'd have 2 equals minus 2x squared plus 5x. We're going to bring all this over to the left-hand side. So we'd have 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. And now we need to solve this quadratic. Um, to do that, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So we'd have x equals minus b, so minus minus 5, which would just give us a positive 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so minus 5 squared would be 25, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 2, all over um, 2a, so 2 times 2. So simplifying all that down, we have 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 2 is 16 over 4, which is going to give us 5 plus or minus 25 minus 16 will give us 9, and the square root of 9 is 3, so 5 plus or minus 3 over 4. And if we go through and figure that out, we're going to end up with x equals, well, 5 plus 3 is 8, and 8 over 4 is 2. Or if we use the negative instead, we have 5 minus 3, which is 2, and 2 over 4 is a half. So that gives us this, these pieces of information here. It tells us that this point of intersection has an x-coordinate of 2, and this point of intersection has an x-coordinate of a half. So that's giving us our upper and lower bounds for our integral. So now we can get rid of all of this. Okay, so now to find our area, we're going to take the integral between those two values that we just found, half and two, and we're going to have to subtract the top function, sorry, the bottom function from the top function. So the function that's on the top is our straight line. So we're going to have minus 2x plus 5, 
And then we're going to subtract the function that's underneath, which was our 2 over x. And we're going to integrate that with respect to x. So to do that, we're going to do each section. So this bit would give us a minus x squared, then plus 5x. And integrating 2 over x would give us minus 2 log to the base e of x. And that's between 2 and a half. So now we can substitute in our values. So substituting in the 2, we would have minus 4 plus 10 minus 2 log 2. Then we're going to subtract and we're going to substitute in our 1 half. So we'd have minus a half squared is a quarter plus 5 over 2 minus 2 log to the base e of a half. Simplifying that down a little bit. Our minus 4 plus 10 will give us a 6, but minus 2 log 2 minus, now this here will give us, um, that whole thing with the negative in front would give us 9 over 2, so no, 9 over 4. And then this negative negative here is going to give us a plus 2 log to the base e, and I'm going to rewrite this a half as 2 to the power of negative 1. So that 2 to the power of negative 1 is just rewriting our half but we can bring that negative power out the front. So we can write this as 6 minus 2 log 2 minus 9 over 4 minus 2 log to base e of 2. So we're making them into like terms now. So that's going to give us all up 15 over 4 minus 4 log to the base e of 2. And that's going to be units squared for that red area in between our two lines. Our last problem asks us to calculate the volume of the solid revolution formed when the curve y equals 3 over the square root of 3x plus 1 is rotated about the x-axis between x equals 1 and x equals 5. So when we're finding the volume of the solid revolution that's rotated about the x-axis, our formula is pi times the integral of y squared dx. So in our case, we're going to have pi. And the integral is going to go between 1 and 5, so there are upper and lower bounds. And our y squared will be 9, because 3 squared is 9. And this denominator squared would just get rid of that square root sign, so we'd have 3x plus 1. And we're going to get integrate that with respect to x. So we've squared this function here. Now, the denominator, the derivative of the denominator would just give us 3, and we've got a 9 on the top. So to turn that into a 3, we're going to pull a 3 out the front with our pi. So we're going to have 3 pi between 1 and 5 of 3 over 3x plus 1 dx. And now we know that the integral of this will be log to base e of this 3x plus 1. So we're going to have 3 pi, um, and then we're going to have log to the base e of 3x plus 1 between 5 and 1. And then we can substitute in our values. We're going to have 3 pi outside of log to the base e of, if we substitute 5 in there, we'd have 3 times 5 is 15, so log to the base e of 16, minus log to the base e of um, 4, if we substitute that one in there. But when we're subtracting logs, we can simplify those down into one log themselves. So we'd have 3 pi times log to the base e, and 16 divided by 4 is 4. And that would be units cubed because we're talking about volume in this case. All right, so that's three examples of applications of integration of 1 over x.